In the previous videos, we developed the analysis of variance approach to making statistical inferences with linear models. Now, let's look at a more general procedure, the general linear test approach, which is, in essence, a model comparison approach. The general linear test proceeds as follows. We specify a full or unrestricted model and determine the amount of error that that model has. Next, we specify a reduced or restricted model and determine the amount of error that that model has. Finally, we're going to test the reduction in error. So the general linear test looks like this. We're still going to form an F statistic. And in reality, this general linear test for our one-factor linear model will end up being identical to the analysis of variance test. But we're going to get to it in a slightly different way. But the F statistic we're going to form is, in the numerator, a reduction in error divided by the number of additional parameters we need to estimate divided by some measurement of baseline error. So let's look at our full and unrestricted models and let's apply the general linear test. First, our full model. Our full model will be the one-factor linear model that we developed before. The yij is equal to a mean plus a treatment offset plus individual error. The reduced or restricted model will hold one of these parameters constant. Specifically, we want to test whether those toss sub j's are equal to zero. So what we're going to do is, under the null hypothesis, hold constant the toss sub j's to be zero. So the reduced or restricted model is simply one of yi is equal to a grand mean plus error. So what we want to do is test whether the full unrestricted model fits our data better than the reduced restricted model. But we need to know whether it fits better than simply chance alone would predict. Because if we simply add parameters to a model, it'll be easier for that model to fit the data. So what we're trying to determine is, per every parameter added, have we reduced error enough to think that it's more than simply sampling error alone? Let's look at this graphically. If we look at our data, here's our grouping based on airline. And notice we have treatment offsets. That is, delta, southwest, and virgin do differ from the grand mean. What we're trying to do, in essence, is determine whether this grouping is more different, that is, whether those treatment offsets are larger than what random grouping would be. So here I'm cycling through three random groupings. Notice that even with random groupings, we're still getting treatment offsets. So we want to know whether our airline grouping is more different that is, explains more of the deviations in the data than simply random groupings would. So that's what our general linear test is doing in essence. It's how much we've reduced error, which is to say added prediction, on the basis of the number of parameters we've added. Now, this number of parameters part is sort of important. If we have a random grouping with three groups, we'll certainly reduce error just a little bit by random chance. If we have 50 random groupings, we'll certainly reduce error by random chance, assuming we have the same number of observations. Notice that when you have the same number of observations, the same number of people, and you randomly group them into 50 groups, well, each of those group means will deviate considerably from the grand mean. There's simply fewer people in each group. So our general linear test in the numerator is really a function of how much we've reduced error per parameter added.